Hi guys, it's the Macintosh Guide and welcome to episode 2 of the macOS Upgrade Marathon. Um, just a couple of things before we start this episode off. Uh, welcome to episode 2, of course. Um, this episode we'll be looking at the macOS Sierra, High Sierra and Mojave updates for the Mac Pro 6.1. Um, also, guys, in my the first episode I mentioned this was going to be a four-part series. It's actually going to be a three-part series. Um, I've decided I'm going to do three operating systems per video, so the next episode will be the series finale. Um, also, guys, I just want to talk about the inclusion of Edge for compatibility. So Microsoft Edge is obviously another main web browser available um, to download and I will actually be including it for episode two and episode and the final finale episode um, and just last of all guys the Adobe suite I just wanted to clarify on a couple of things so Adobe I did try and reach out to Adobe to just kind of get a bit more information if they can um, provide me a bit of clarity regarding the support for older OS's so they did mention that they only support um, the three OS's that Apple currently support in terms of security updates, which is uh, Big Sur, Monterey, and Ventura. So, yeah, just a little update, guys, but enjoy the rest of the video, and I shall see you at the end of the video. So, guys, Mac OS Sierra, it released on September 20th, 2016, with the build of 10.12. Um, the upgrade time it took from El Capitan was 18 minutes and 37 seconds. The current version that is available is 10.12.6, which was released back in July 2017, but the, the latest security build for the operating system is 2019, so about four years ago. Um, it's a free update from macOS or OS X Lion 10.7.5, and the supported devices, as you can see on the screen, the late 20, 2009 or newer MacBook, MacBook Pro mid-2010 onwards, MacBook Air late 2010 or newer, Mac Mini mid-2010 or newer, iMac late 2009 or newer, and Mac Pro mid-2010 or newer. Booted straight into macOS Sierra. This is the first version where they started using the macOS name. Um, the interesting couple of things, you've got Siri, which is one top. I don't want to enable Silly, she isn't that great. That's uh, She's beautifully designed, but she just isn't that great, in my personal opinion. I don't use Siri on my phone, or my iPad, or my watch, so I don't want to use Siri on my Mac. Um, another thing straight away, as I said guys, App Store updates again. Um, interesting enough, it actually shows me a tab for show incompatible updates, which is all the new versions of iMovie, Keynote, Page Send numbers but let's just quickly have a look what updates are available it's uh, remote desktop client 3.9.3 safari version 12.1.2 and a security update from 2019 so let me just get those installed and then we'll go through some of the features again. seeing anything in this update guys it's bare minimum by apple i think it's more bug fixes and trying to make the os smoother which is what their priority was now there are a couple of features that they did introduce stuff like in iTunes there's now a for you tab which is related to Apple Music um, again very minor it was just revamped under iTunes before we started seeing the app in the later OS's in photos we have the option of let me just put this in of memories um, I don't obviously have that many photos so it's not going to give me memories but it's any trips or anything like that it will, it will sort those out um, there was big continuity changes if I let's say made notes and then I pressed copy I can then paste it onto my phone on my or my iPad and I can do it in reverse however the issue I'm having is I can copy from my Mac to my phone right now but I can't copy from my phone to my Mac and I believe that's that's an OS related issue um, uh, iCloud had a couple of changes you now would get a iCloud Drive folder showing up over here um, if I want to save all my files automatically from my desktop going straight into the cloud um, there's also a 
optimize storage function. So if I click on manage, and I've got a bunch of options over here so I, I can store my files in iCloud and save space for my Mac. I can click optimize storage, which will automatically remove like iTunes films or any other files um, that I just haven't really used or already watched. I can, em I can empty my trash can automatically. Um, I can review all my files, which could be cluttering. So it would give it like a, a more um, detailed showing. Uh, another interesting thing that Apple added, which is now become quite important, is the ability to do Apple Pay. Um, some websites have signed up to Apple Pay, uh, but the option is obviously still not added onto uh, system preferences yet, which we do in the later OSs, and I'll show you guys that as well. Um, and then just some minor stuff like picture in picture. You can now get tabs in like Keynote and stuff. I can't seem to update my my numbers or Keynotes or anything like that. Uh, I guess it's because it's trying to update to the latest version. It can't give me the previous OS versions or the previous versions of it. Um, and another interesting thing is there have been changes in security and privacy. So if you download an app or a, an application from online, there used to be an option that would say um, allow apps to be downloaded from anywhere that's that's now been removed you just get the standard load two options it doesn't mean that you can't download apps or anything from online you can it's just you'll get an open anyway message it's just apple's way of locking um, and and keeping your machine more secure uh, but yeah and obviously the other option you guys can see is allow your apple watch to unlock your mac this was obviously introduced. You can literally, as if your Apple Watch is in radius to your MacBook, it'll unlock the MacBook or your Mac or whatever. In this instance, we've got the Mac Pro 2013. So if I walk into my room, it'll automatically unlock my Mac Pro for me. So yeah, those are some of the features um, that were interested in introduced in Mac OS Sierra. Very minimal, obviously the key one being Siri being introduced. So yeah, I would say it was a, it was a very minor OS update, but loads of bugs, that's for sure. So guys, app compatibility for Mac OS Sierra is, uh, it's, it's there guys. Um, iWorks 2018, major release works. Chrome 103, which was released back in June 2022. That's the last version that works. Firefox, you can use the latest version. So that's, that's a positive. Office apps, Office 2019 seems to be the last version that works. Uh, Creative Suite. Six seems to work, but again, no clear information by Adobe. And Final Cut version 10.4.3 seems to be, again, the last version that works for Sierra. So guys, now we are on macOS High Sierra. Uh, this was released with 10.13 on September 25th, 2017. Uh, the upgrade time it took from Sierra was 23 minutes. Uh, the current version that's available, the latest version, is 10.13.6, which was released on July 9th, 2018, with the latest security build being from November 2020. Um, it's a free update from Mountain Lion onwards, so it's now obviously pushed away from Lion. Um, and the supported devices are a MacBook 2009 or newer, MacBook Pro 20, mid-2010 or newer, um, MacBook Air, late 2010 or newer, Mac Mini, mid 2010 or newer, iMac, late 2009 or newer, and Mac Pro, mid 2010 or newer. So it's still similar devices from the previous one. thing, guys. Uh, when you click on the Mac OS downloads page from Apple's website, um, you realize there's a line between Sierra and then High Sierra. From High Sierra on, all the downloads for Mac OS are on the actual Mac App Store. So it took me straight away into the Mac App Store. I click download. The download will, be, will begin. And then I will, of course, be installing the OS update. So, yeah, I shall see you guys when it's finished downloading and, and, and it's been installed. We booted into High Sierra. As you can tell, we are now on 10.13.6. Um, this update actually took a while. It took nearly about 23 minutes from Sierra. Um, High Sierra is known for its uh, under the hood fixes, um, the smoothness of High Sierra. Um, obviously, just to boot up the machine, 
first thing I obviously see guys, the first thing we obviously discuss about is the updates that come up. So um, there seems to be iTunes 12.8.3 update, there seems to be a Safari 13.1.2 update, and there also seems to be a security update from 2020. So three years ago, security update, let's get these done guys as you know, um, and then we'll dwell straight into the features guys. The error, a couple of interesting stuff we can now start doing. So, you know how Google Chrome and Firefox, we had to keep looking for versions? Well, we have the latest version of Firefox, and we also have the latest version of Google Chrome. So, what that will now allow us to do is browse when the modern times, we're still going to be able to get security updates for our web browser. Um, which is already a fantastic start to High Sierra, which means the compatibility is looking great so far. We can surf the internet, we can be protected. That's what we would want in the modern day. Now, another great thing about High Sierra is that this update focused mainly on performance increasing. So I've got an article from Mac Rumors. Again, I'll link all the articles in the description, but Apple touts that saying that it is more responsive, it is safe and secure, of course. Um, it's obviously got a 64-bit architecture redesign. Um, and yeah, you can feel it, guys. It's it's fluid, it's quick, it does everything without any issues. Um, a couple of other things that Apple did introduce with the update was HEVC and also Metal 2. Also had... Um, improvements happening to it as well so yeah and and the biggest thing was external gpu support now i actually do have a razor core x that i run a 6800 uh, rx 6800 xt with and it it blazes fast however it does it's not supported on high sierra but some of the earlier cards back in the days like the 580 as you can tell here in the article was supported so some good good under the hood performance stuff from Apple. Um, and the other big thing that Apple introduced was the Apple file system. So if we minimize Safari over here and I open up Disk Utility, you're going to realize that the volume is now APFS. Uh, this is Apple's own file system. It's meant to be quicker, it's meant to be loading up the OS quicker, actions are meant to be faster. Um, it, it, you can tell it is much speedier as well so that's another thing that apple introduced with high sierra um another thing that i can now actually do is geekbench scores um i'm just getting geekbench downloaded as well so as soon as that's downloaded i will get the first benchmark ready for you of the series. mentioned i can now finally do geekbench tests um so let's just get straight into it we'll run a cpu benchmark and then i'll show you guys the results hopefully what i can now do is go from show you guys benchmark results from high Sierra until monterey uh, that way we get to see what the difference is between each os is going forward so i shall see you guys very shortly the results from geekbench for the cpu test and the single core score in high sierra is six 767 and the multi score being 7201. So, pretty impressive so far. Obviously, not M1 levels or definitely not M2 levels. However, it still does really well in modern day. Let's now jump into doing the GPU test on the D700. So I'll do an open CL and I'll also do a metal test. So yeah, so I shall see you with the results for both of them short. Sure. Um, open CL scores, obviously I can see, but no metal score. It just wouldn't let me do a metal score test. It just wouldn't work. Wouldn't want to do anything. So I can only show you guys the open CL one. So the open CL score is 29,309. Um, very good. It's, it's again, it, it's perfectly fine for a normal day use. You're not going to really struggle uh, with anything. Um, but yeah, this is a score in High Sierra. It'll be interesting to see if the score decreases as we go or if it increases as we go. And hopefully we should be able to see metal scores for the other OS updates down the line. So yeah, this is High Sierra Geekbench results. No metal ones, unfortunately. It just wouldn't work. Um, 
uh, yeah, guys, High Sierra is a good operating system, in my opinion. Calling Mojave is... I completely forgot about this, guys. We forgot the best web browser available ever. The Microsoft Edge browser. Um, this actually had support since 10.12. So um, you could technically be up to date on the web and use the web on 10.12. And I apologize, I did not do testing with this one. But guys, Microsoft Edge works from 10.12 onwards. So you can stay up to date on the web browser which is brilliant <laughs> so guys mac os high sierra what's app compatibility like so i work 2019 major release works um chrome latest version works absolutely fine uh it was released on 24th january 2023 so yeah it's still going to get some support going forward firefox 109.0.1 latest version which was released on 17th of january 2023 works absolutely fine again it will still be getting software updates so it's the newest versions microsoft edge what well, we've got a new a new browser showing up guys uh latest version 2nd of february 2023 so just a couple of days ago that works absolutely fine i made a mistake sierra actually does not support office 2019 it supports office 2016 and so does high sierra guys um Adobe Suite, again, guys, there's just not much information by Adobe. They just say that they only support the, la the, the last three OSs that um, Apple support. So CS6 seems to be the one that it works. And Final Cut Pro 10.4.6 version works with High Sierra. So, guys, we have now moved on to Mac OS Mojave. Uh, the release date was uh, with version 10.14 was back in September 14th, 24th. 2018 the upgrade time from high sierra was 22 minutes and 49 seconds the current version that is available is 10.14.6 which was released back in july 2019 with the latest security build being from july 21st 2021 um, it's a free update again from mountain lion uh, 10.8 or later um, however we see some Upgrades in the devices. So MacBook early 2015 or newer. So the the white one, the white unibody is definitely gone. MacBook Air mid 2012 or newer. MacBook Pro mid 2012 or newer. Mac Mini 2012 or newer. iMac 2012 or newer. iMac Pro 2017, and Mac Pro late 2013 onwards. The the mid 2010 and mid 2012 models can be supported, but they need a metal capable graphics card. Booted into Mac OS Mojave, uh, 10.14.6. Um, Mojave is a very good one, in my honest opinion. A lot of people I know still run Mojave. Support is brilliant for most applications, um, and it again, it's it's a it's a stable OS in my honest opinion. I've never really had any issues with Mojave in the past when it was new, um, and I don't really use it as much, but. Again, I've never really encountered any issues. Now, the first thing I want us to have a look at is the new software update section. So instead of going to get updates from the Mac App Store, you can now directly get them within system preferences. You can already sell it's already telling me to just down upgrade to Monterey directly. However, we are now we are more interested in the Mojave security update that's still available. So it was last updated back in 2021. This was the last security update available. Um, and we are just going to get this installed. Once it's installed, guys, I'll go through all the features as as always and then we'll do a couple of benchmarks. Some of the new things in Mojave. Well Mojave actually brought some useful features. Now, one of the things that Mojave brought along was the, I don't know how why we had to wait this long for this, but it is dark mode. So it gives us the ability to transition into dark mode. All the applications will open up in dark essence. As you can see, Safari is an example. I believe even the app store. Yep. So every single app that Apple have all of a sudden gets a dark mode aesthetic. Um, one of the other interesting things, sorry, I'm just going to change this back to light. Um, one of the other aesthetic things that Apple have brought along with it was Night Shift. 
So you can schedule this in for sun for a custom time or a sunset to sunrise. What it does is it starts tinting the color uh, to ensure eye comfort uh, when you're using the you know a monitor or your laptop or whatever at night time. So it's it's convenience, guys. It's it it is a good feature to bring in. Um, the app store, as we just saw briefly, it's actually been revamped. Um, it's much much different compared to what High Sierra was, where you've had your updates and all those tabs at the top. This is now going onto iPad slash iOS type of design, um, just for greater visibility, I guess. I, I, I mean, I don't really see anything wrong with the App Store, but it seems much faster than it was in the previous version. So I'll give Apple that credit. Um, and also, you see the update section. This is not updates for the operating system. This is updates for apps. So they've obviously separated both the uh, software updates for the operating system and software updates for um, apps, which is, I guess it makes sense for Apple to to do that. That Apple decided to bring along is also dynamic wallpapers. So as you can see here, the way it works is it, sh it shifts, the wallpaper shifts throughout the day. So currently it's set to dynamic. If I keep it to light, it's a different shade completely. If I keep it dark, it's the dark my wallpaper. But if I keep it dynamic, this is the current shift of the day that the wallpaper is showing us. So it's two wallpapers to, available as solar as well. Um, but I, I like to keep the the default Mojave one. I feel like it's a it's a really good eyewear. It's a really good uh, wallpaper to use. Um, another cover, another interesting thing that Apple introduces is some changes to the docks, as you can tell. You now have uh, recents in your dock, um, which you can disable, see, as it goes away. But it's quite good. It has a little separation from the apps that you already have on your dock. Um, any app that you use, I believe it's up to three applications that you can have stored in your recents. Um, again, it's, it's just your, the applications that you used um, that are just not on your dock that show up there. Um, a couple of new apps were introduced by Apple as well. So we've got one of them being right here somewhere. There you go, they're right here, Home. So this is obviously using HomeKit. Um, it's obviously telling me to turn iCloud keychain on, I've not signed in. This allows you to obviously act, manage all your home appliances and smart tech that you have in your household. I obviously don't really have anything, so I don't really have any devices on mine. You've got the Stocks app. Um, if you're really into the market, this is your place to go. Uh, you'll see all the information here and, and, and reports along with it. You've got voice memos, which also was available with Mojave. Um, it's it's good to have it's good to have this application just built in. Some people want to make some voice memo notes and stuff like that. It's again really easily accessible through your Mac. And the big one being Apple News. This was introduced in Mojave. Um, it's basically just like what Flipboard is. You get access to all your uh, news articles, top stories, you can scroll down, it's obviously showing me everything in the United Kingdom um, and the US, so yeah, that's obviously all available um, with Apple News. So yeah, convenience, you just get the news straight from your dock. Um, I think this is a good, good addition that Apple did. Uh, a couple of other features that were also introduced is stuff like group FaceTime as well. You can now FaceTime with up to, I believe, 32 other individuals so that is also a cool good feature that Mojave had was stacks so let's just say you have so many files um, what stacks does is it, it will ap appropriately put them in the format that they are in so if I do new stacks there you go images is already be made into over here if I click it it will show me the drop down menu so pretty good feature by Apple in my opinion helps with uh, I've seen desktops. I've you know I work in the IT industry. I see people's desktops just cluttered with files. This is good to see. It just declutters everything. So brilliant feature, useful, um, and and yeah, I use it every day. I don't like to have a cluttered desktop. So any key essential files I have on my desktop, 
decluttered just the like Geekbench this. results, and I was actually able to do my metal tests as well this time. So the CPU is 783 on single core and 7751 on multi core score. Um, the OpenCL score was a bit different. So the Mac Pro on OpenCL did 29,547. Um, which is pretty good. However, I did metal score twice on 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 the D seven one and D seven two. Um, and I got a bit of odd scores, so I got thirty thousand five hundred and four. And then when I did it on D seven, the second D seven hundred, I got a score of thirty two thousand one hundred and seventy six. So still pretty good. However, just a bit odd that both of them got different results. But those are the Geekbench results, guys. So app compatibility for macOS Mojave. So iWorks 2020 major release works. Chrome latest version, Firefox latest version, Edge latest version, Office apps still Office 2016. Uh, the Adobe Suite CS6 works. Again, guys, it's just Adobe's terrible with clarity. And uh, Final Cut Pro 10.4.10 is the latest version that works. So, is it wise to run any of the three OSs that we talked about in episode two today? Well, it's a yes and no answer. It's a no mainly for Sierra. So, please, please, please stay away from Sierra. However, it's a yes if you're going to be using High Sierra and Mojave. You get a good modern experience. There's more compatible apps available out there uh, for both of those two operating systems. And it's definitely much more stable to run compared to Sierra. So, yes to High Sierra and Mojave. It's a big fat no for me for Mac OS Sierra. Now, if you enjoyed this video, guys leave a like and absolutely subscribe we've got one more episode which is going to be covering catalina big sir and monterey so stay tuned guys and i'll see you in the next one